Bangor. From the great north woods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, a home in Abbott is left badly damaged by a hit-and-run driver. Plus, our newly inaugurated governor signs a bill that will help Mainers cope with the high cost of heating. And people in Rockland are being taught how to administer Narcan as the area's drug problem continues to rise. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for joining us. The big story this morning really is the weather. We have a messy storm system moving through the area. It's not really bringing a lot of precipitation, but what is falling has been freezing and just causing a slippery mess. When we got up at around 3 o'clock this morning, we certainly had to ice, uh, scrape our windshield shields and Absolutely. it took a while too. And it wasn't snowing quite that quite yet either, which no. might may have been better for us, even yeah. though the roads hadn't been salted I think at all. It was mostly sleet around here at that point. Right. Other areas are see- receiving snow, so you can plan as you're heading out for the day, you're going to probably want to let you warm up your car a little bit. Right. We we still might have a live picture from Greenville. I'm not sure if we can pull that up real quick. It was kind of a peaceful picture over there. It was snowing uh, pretty steady there earlier. Now you pretty. can see it's coming down pretty slow there in, in Greenville Junction, one of the most beautiful areas of the state. Yep, that's uh, definitely manageable over there. Yeah, and that's what we're going to be seeing. Some p- places will be seeing a little more snow than others, probably the further north you go. I know a number of schools in the area have either closed or they're um, delaying the start of classes today. The bottom line is, just be forewarned, it's very messy out there on the streets. If you don't have to head out today, maybe stay home and watch yep. a movie or something. Definitely. The Penobscot County Sheriff's Office has issued a warning for people on the roads today. It's bad, so be careful. There you go. Well, the guy that's been following it all is Devin. He joins us now with our forecast. Hey, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. So we have winter weather advisories that are in effect. They run until about 5 o'clock this afternoon for these areas here. And that's because we do have some snow and a winter mix that is moving. And it's going to make roads a little bit slippery from time to time. We also have small cat advisories up until 1 o'clock this afternoon for this area right here. We'll pull this map further off towards the south and west. And some will expire at 4 p.m. So the times are going to be kind of various with regards to expiration times. So in general, small cat advisories along the coast today. Winter weather advisories is being noted here in a purple because of some travel issues with the winter mix and some accumulating snow that is moving in now and we're seeing it look at this so we have snow being indicated here in the blue and the darker blues indicating some heavier precipitation further off towards the south and west that pink indicating a wintry mix or some freezing rain in a few areas and further to the south and west in the green of course regular rain also being indicated let's zoom things out this is that wave of energy here riding along this front so we'll keep this going for parts of today we'll get a little bit of a break but maybe one more wave as we head towards tomorrow before things finally begin to ease up. But as for the winds, again, they're a little gusty out there. Sustained winds up to 10 miles per hour out of the northeast, especially over the ocean, and that is why those small craft advisories are in effect. Moving forward for today, there's a snow in that winter mix. Maybe a break later today, but more development on the way later on tonight before we start to wrap things up as we head towards your Friday morning. So your forecast for today, upper 20s, freezing rain, sleet, and snow on the way. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Now that hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period will keep the snow in that winter mix going. Temperatures in the 20s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. Authorities are searching for a driver who crashed into a house in Abbott. The Piscataquis County Sheriff's Department says the person fled from the scene and left the house badly damaged. Officials say it was around 440 Wednesday when they were called to the home on the main road. They say it appears the driver was traveling at a high rate of speed when the vehicle went off the road and slammed into the home. Fortunately, no one was there at the time and the couple who lives there made the discovery when they returned. By then, the driver had left the scene and deputies are now turning to the public to help find the person. They say a preliminary investigation determined the vehicle might be a 2014 to 2018 Jeep Trailhawk. Anyone with information about the crash is urged to contact the Piscataquis County Sheriff's Department. They suspect the vehicle is also badly damaged. Well, meanwhile, a Massachusetts man facing murder charges here in Maine entered a plea in court on Wednesday morning. Our Matthew Jaronsik was also there. Jorge Pagan Sanchez was arrested in December in connection with a murder that took place on November 4, 2022 in Machias. The Massachusetts native is one of four men facing a murder charge in the shooting of 17-year-old Brandon Guerrero of New York. Investigators learned that Emmanuel Ramos, Juan Ortiz, and Pagan Sanchez trafficked drugs from Massachusetts on Beale Street in Machias and set up a plan to kill and rob Guerrero of his drugs and money at the Machias Cemetery. 
Months later, residents of the tight-knit community are still on edge about the amount of drug cases occurring in town. I, I want to feel like I'm living in a safe community and over the past few years I've been seeing more and more of these these drug cases that have been coming up where people have been getting murdered and, and so I, I'm upset that this has taken place and that this is happening in our small community and it shouldn't be. Appearing in court Wednesday, Pagan Sanchez faced felony murder and burglary charges. He pleaded guilty to all charges, each having a potential prison sentence of 30 years and a penalty of $50,000. Prior to these charges, Pagan Sanchez had a prior felony burglary charge for an attempted armed robbery in Massachusetts. Justice Bruce Maloney accepted the plea deal. Community members say they're being extra cautious in the town they call home. Lock your car doors. Don't leave your cars running outside before work and lock your home. Like, I know there's a lot of people that still love this area for being able to keep their doors unlocked at night, but we've got to start. There is no set date for when Pagan Sanchez will be sentenced. Reporting for Machias, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, and Fox 22. A Maine man accused of attacking police officers with a machete near New York, New York's Times Square on New Year's Eve was arraigned in court Wednesday. 19-year-old Trevor Bickford, who was shot by police during the confrontation, was arraigned by video from a Manhattan hospital and ordered to be held without bail. Bickford, who grew up in Wells, is charged with attempting to murder police officers, assault and attempted assault. If convicted, he faces a mandatory life sentence. Bickford told investigators he was intent on committing a jihad against government officials. Prosecutors say he shouted Alu Akbar before striking one officer in the head and attempting to grab another officer's gun. The attack left three officers injured. Wells Police Captain Jerry Condon says Bickford's mother contacted the Wells Police Department on December 10th to express concerns about her son, and the department notified the FBI. Investigators found Bickford's online postings included some mentions of Islamic extremist views. Bickford did not enter a plea and has another court appearance scheduled for Friday. Well, the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office is investigating an inmate's death at the jail that they say may be due to a drug overdose. Last night, actually Tuesday night, approximately 820, officers were alerted to an unresponsive male inmate. Despite their efforts and help from Bangor Fire and Rescue, they were unable to revive that person. The Sheriff's Office says an early investigation indicates the medical event was not caused by a physical altercation between inmates or the staff and is being investigated as a potential overdose death. Uh, no name is being released at this time, pending the notification of that person's family. Two people have been arrested in connection with what police are calling a large tool theft in Hancock County. The Ellsworth Police Department has been investigating a theft from a work site at the Mill Dam that happened around December 14th and a burglary at a home on the Bangor Road that occurred around December 10th. They say more than $16,000 worth of tools and equipment were stolen during the incidents. 29-year-old Timothy Stanley of Bucksport is being charged with burglary, theft and violation of bail in connection with the Bangor Road burglary. He was also summoned for theft for his alleged role in the Mill Dam theft. 31-year-old Jacob Carney of Eastbrook is being charged with theft for his alleged role in the theft of tools from the Mill Dam worksite. Work site, excuse me. Police say nearly all of these stolen items have been recovered and returned to their rightful owners. Well, Maine's Catholic Diocese is pushing back against several lawsuits claiming sexual abuse by priests against children for decades in Maine. Attorneys with Berman and Simmons say there are now 13 lawsuits against the diocese accusing priests in at least one, in one case a nun of sexual abuse dating back to the 1950s. The legal action comes after Maine lifted its statute of limitations on sex crimes. Attorneys for the victims are releasing court documents from the diocese. Motions to dismiss the lawsuit, saying lifting the statute of limitations on alleged sex crimes is unconstitutional. It references that it wants the same protection as banks on page 20. On their motion, page 20, they said, quote, such de destabilizing and arbitrary authority, end quote, was never given to the Maine legislature. They're saying the Maine legislature shouldn't be trusted. Well, in those court documents, the diocese argues it's the specific alleged perpetrators who should be to blame and not the diocese itself. Attorneys for the victims say the diocese is responsible for failing to keep the alleged victims away from known offenders. 
They filed a motion rebutting the legal action from the diocese and expect a decision in the weeks or possibly months ahead. You could see a $450 check from the state of Maine in a matter of weeks. It's meant to help offset high heating costs, and it's part of an emergency heating relief plan, which the governor said was her first priority. Both the House and the Senate passed the measure Wednesday, and within the hour, the governor signed it. Brad Rogers has more. Well, with the bill now signed into law, eligible Mainers can expect to start receiving those $450 checks by mid-January. Once again, the House passed the Emergency Winter Energy Relief Plan by a wide margin, more than enough votes to pass the emergency measure. The Senate then narrowly got the two-thirds vote needed to pass the emergency measure, but not before debating the bill. Republican Senator Eric Brakey told members of the Senate, this bill is nothing but a crutch for the people of Maine. As far as crutches go, there are items in this bill I would gladly approve if they were standalone items. The bill also includes $40 million in home heating assistance and $10 million in emergency fuel assistance to help low-income Mainers. It also adds $21 million to the Emergency Housing Relief Fund aimed at preventing homelessness this winter. But Senator Jeff Timberlake says this money does nothing to fund drug treatment programs or increase reimbursements to home health agencies. But we didn't even discuss other options of ways that maybe we could fund the nursing homes in the state of Maine. Other Republicans don't understand why couples earning nearly $200,000 should qualify for these checks. If you think the cutoff should be $200,000 and that the person that makes $199 should qualify for these checks, I do not agree with that. But Democratic Senator Maddie Daughtry says what this emergency measure will do is help 77 families in her community now at risk of losing their homes. These are 77 people that I know when I vote today, that I'm voting for them to make sure that they are able to not only have a roof over their heads, but be able to stay warm. The bill provides $450 relief checks to roughly 880,000 Mainers. Couples who qualify get $900. And that was Bill Rogers reporting. Brad. Brad Rogers reporting. <laughs> it's one of those days. I'm sorry. So glad you're here. I know a Bill Rogers. <laughs> oh, so, God. Gotcha. Anyway. There you go. There you go. Well, the time now is 8:12. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, Governor Mills takes the oath of office during her inauguration in Augusta. We'll take you there. But first, another check of your weather forecast. A messy day today. We can expect a wintry mix with highs around 29 degrees. It will continue tonight with lows dropping down to around the mid 20s. And then tomorrow, yes, another chance of snow in the afternoon. The highs tomorrow, 33 degrees. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Whether it's coaching kids soccer, volunteering at the local firehouse, helping out at the food pantry, or providing the children of our employees with scholarships. The New England Toyota dealers and the thousands of people we employ play a role in lifting up the community. We're proud to serve you and to be part of those things that benefit us all. Toyota. Let's go places. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. I understand that this is all very traumatizing. It's impossible not to think the worst. But I want you to know that we get our babies back. Come on, let's go, 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 go. can't stop until we catch this guy. This is life or death. It's okay. I'm right here. Alert. Missing Persons Unit. Premieres January 8th on Fox. Yesterday.
Yesterday marked the official beginning of Governor Janet Mills' second term. The inauguration was held at the Augusta Civic Center, and our Devin Dagnall was there. Governor Janet Mills spoke at her second inauguration. In her speech, she welcomed a predominantly female legislature. Madam Secretary of State, Madam Speaker, Madam Chief Justice, I like the way this is going. She also focused on her accomplishments in the past. We provided universal free meals in the public schools. We provided free community college to recent high school grads. But throughout her speech, she focused on hope. Hope is not an easy thing. It's not mere wishful thinking. It's just trying to, not just trying to do what we did yesterday in the same old, same old way. Hope is disruptive. It is, after all, a four-letter word. It, it challenges and changes the way we do things, and it calls on us to advance and adapt while preserving everything we are as a people and all the values we hold dear. And more than ever before, because of everything we have been through and because of everything we are, hope resides here in Maine. Devin Dagnall reporting, and it looks like they're going to continue with the inaugural festivities today. I think they have something for the kids this afternoon, and then they'll have the ball tonight. That cool. one is not open to the public, oh, but hopefully they have a good time down there in Augusta. All, all iron I know, I, my, my tux is waiting too. <laughs> you know, not really, I don't own a tux. Really? Uh, no. You no. Don't, oh, I was going to say. I rented one a tomorrow. couple times. You know, yes. I've been married so many times, I should own one by now. But <laughs> Greg. Okay. Anyway. Okay, well, moving on now. Want me to read this? This okay. is your reader, yeah. Healthcare <laughs> systems around the country are having a hard time. I've only been married twice, by the way. <laughs> having a hard time bouncing back from the pandemic, and Northern Light Health is no exception. Chances are our changes are being put in place as the system tries to recover. The system runs 10 hospitals around the state. In early December, Northern Light announced Quest Diagnostics would manage nine of Northern Light Health's hospital labs, as well as the lab at Northern Light Cancer Care in Brewer. Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center closed its Ordo primary care practice as of January 1st. And then on Monday, the system announced it is also temporarily reducing hours at the walk-in care location on Union Street in Bangor while they continue to restructure the care model. They do plan to resume a seven-day-a-week service there later this winter. According to a statement from Senior Vice President and Chief of Marketing Communications, Suzanne Spruce, she said throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Northern Light Health was driven by a culture of yes. And we demonstrated that by ensuring our communities had continued access to safe care, these were the right choices. But they also added to deeper deficits, which we now need to correct. It is imperative that we take thoughtful and swift action to meet the demand of a rapidly changing health care industry. Basically, they're trying to find ways to cut money and we're restructuring and then they'll get back on track. Absolutely. Well, Rockland police are educating locals on the use of a life-saving overdose reviver drug, re reversal drug, excuse me. David Ledford has the story. On January 5th, the Rockland Police Department, in partnership with Options Maine and Sweetster Developmental Services, will be holding a public training on how to administer naloxone, which reverses the effects of an opioid overdose. The session will begin at 5.30 p.m. at the Rockland City Hall Council Chambers. According to Rockland Police Department officials, the drug, commonly known by the brand name Narcan, can mean the difference between life and death. It's been a problem all over the country and, and the state and Rockland. The importance of uh, Narcan and having these um, harm reduction tools is, is, is life-saving, literally. While the use of naloxone is commonly associated with a fentanyl overdose, officials say the medication is often used to counteract other opioids. Options Maine, an opioid education group, wants to spread awareness of the issue. According to Will Bucklin, the options liaison for Knox County, providing an overdosed individual with naloxone is a straightforward process. Pull Narcan out, you would insert it into the nostril. Very much like any allergy medication, you just press the plunger, the naloxone exits. According to MainDrugData.org, there were 8,488 total overdoses in the state in 2022, as per the most recent data, 565 of which were fatal. Given the frequency, Buckland says that everyone should have naloxone in their first aid kit and wants to assure Mainers that the drug is safe to keep around. Comparing it to even ibuprofen, 
naloxone is very safe. If there's no opioids in your system, it's going to have zero effect. The only instance that naloxone has an effect on someone is when there's opioids in their system. To get access to naloxone or learn more about the effects of opioid use, visit knowyouroptions.me. In Rockland, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22. And the time now is 8.20. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from the artist that does the designs on some of the local fire trucks in the area. That story and more as Good Morning Maine continues. It wasn't just a little bit of soot on an old family photo. It wasn't just a couple of books soaked in water. And when you called Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, you were not just another customer. That family photo hangs high yet again. And those irreplaceable first editions stay cemented in history. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Let's go. Watch all new episodes of Hell's Kitchen starting tonight. Yes, chef. Kick off 2023 with a... Ah! Oh the final line are fired up. Go, 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 go. Pedal to the metal. To battle it out. We're this close. Till the finale. Uh, it's blue. Back in the pan. Boom. We all want this. We want to win. Ah! All new episodes of Hell's Kitchen return tonight on Fox. Massachusetts intends to finance up to 40% of a wind power project in far northern Maine. That potentially gives Maine the partner it needs to make that project become a reality. The Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources has determined in a public finding that the 1,000 megawatt project would bring clean energy to the state while reducing ratepayer costs during the winter. The Aroostook County project, called King Pine, was proposed by Boston-based Long Road Energy, and it would bring power to tens of thousands of homes in Maine. Maine officials say the project has found a needed financial commitment from an outside entity to make sure costs remain as low as possible for ratepayers. We can all agree that first responders have some of the toughest and most important jobs out there. For them, their equipment can make all the difference when it comes to safety and the quality of work they do. But for Dennis Bean, a firefighter in Orno, he takes pride in his job to the next level. Our chief photographer, Dave Simpson, caught up with him as he put the finishing touches on some of his work. Another call. And it's like firefighting, and you, you'll never perfect it, but you can always improve. And that's, that's what keeps me motivated to do both. Uh, this new truck, especially, there's some changes in the department with the color scheme. We wanted to uh, change that a little bit, make it kind of our own. We thought uh, the black bear is kind of uh, uh, insignia we have here, where we're just up the street and we are uh, the first responding units to the university. Um, I've done some artwork on the other trucks with with the black bear, and this one will have one on it too, but it's a surprise. None of the guys have seen it yet. I hand cut them with a knife and then layered them on to the shadows. So it's still got that kind of a personal touch, yet it's not computer generated. It's one of those places I can go to, uh, especially after a tough shift. We have, we have some rough calls. Uh, I can just set back and, and draw or paint and I just kind of lose my mind they'd say a lot of times people look 
a very long time to find that passion uh, in life, and I feel that I was blessed with both. So being here at the department and uh, my artwork. So it's been a privilege. I've done several vehicles uh, in the Penobscot County region. Sometimes we show up on a fire and it's just like, it's like a wall of art. <laughs> I say, I remember that. It's especially humbling when I can tie the two, my passion for art and my love of uh, being in the fire department, when I can tie the two together like this, uh, it's a win. I love that. He shows up at a scene sometimes, it's just like a wall of art, yeah. his, his artwork that he gets to see. Yeah, I mean, so. personal expression is so important. You yeah. heard the man. He said, hey, I can just wind down. But also, it's like that boosts morale for the department. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I think he's got a future in art, too. Yeah, yes. good so. for him. Good for him. The time now is 825. Time to get a full look at our weather forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. This right here is a winter weather advisory that's in effect until about 5 o'clock this afternoon for the counties highlighted here in the purple. The times might be a little bit different depending on where you're at, so we'll pull this map around for a few spots to see how it goes. Looks like pretty much everyone's at around 5 o'clock for that in some areas until 1 o'clock this afternoon for a small cabin advisory. But again, you pull this map to the south and west and some will expire at around 4 o'clock. So the times are kind of different depending on where you're at. But some wave height issues and, of course, wintry precipitation moving in, giving us some road conditions issues also being noted. And snow mainly showing up on the radar. But again, a, a wintry mix possible as well, mainly sleet and freezing rain as temperatures are below freezing here at the surface. So we're going to be watching us throughout the daytime. Say there will be some breaks with this, but more snow will be possible later on to the day into the overnight period before we catch a little bit of a break as we head towards tomorrow. Courtesy of this system right here that's tracking off towards the north and east, bringing this wave of energy with it. So we'll keep the snow chances going today and tonight. A little bit of a wintry mix can't be ruled out either. And by later on, we'll start seeing things easing up just in time for the weekend. So moving th forward, though, future cash showing those snow chances and that wintry mix as well. We'll keep that going for a bit, maybe backing off at times, but picking up again overnight tonight with another wave that will be developing. But notice just in time for Friday, things finally start to calm down before another wave of snow begins to move. So we have at least a couple more waves, I should say, of snow between Friday and between now and Friday, I should say, before things start to calm down just in time for the weekend. So a little bit more snow on the way before we're all finished up for your Saturday. So it looks like this at this point. So we're going to run us all the way through at least Thursday evening. So later tonight, though, maybe an inch or two before we're all finished up further off towards the north. Hardly anything toward the south between basically now and Thursday. I'm, I, I would imagine we might see a little bit more than that. But again, if we run this all the way through Friday, at least maybe one to two inches in a few areas before we're all finished up, maybe up to four inches further off towards the south and east, at least another four to five inches between now and Saturday. So some accumulating snow on the way. Let's make sure to keep an eye on things. Roads may get a little messy from time to time. So your forecast for today, upper 20s on the way, freezing rain, sleet and snow. The northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight, mid 20s, snow showers and freezing drizzle on the way. The north wind backing off to about five to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, Tomorrow, lower 30s, more snow showers on the way. North wind at about 5 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So again, we have snow showers through Friday, at least a couple more waves with that. Then Saturday and Sunday, lots of sunshine temperatures in the 30s on Saturday, close to 40, then backing off to the mid-20s Sunday with even more sunshine by that point. Then we're partly cloudy again on Monday, highs in the mid-30s. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. CEM DP Porter Contractors has been in business for over 40 years in the Bangor area. We specialize in design build for commercial, medical, and residential. We can assist our customers with anything from lot procurement to help you find financing for your project along with building maintenance and renovations. CEM DP Porter Contractors is currently hiring a Herman for multiple positions including carpenters and laborers. We offer vacation, holidays, a 3% IRA match, and competitive pay. If interested in applying, please contact Jason at 207-848-7486. From the land to the sea, Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our hideaway lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekends with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. I never get the flu. 
My kids don't need more shots. I don't have time. We're all healthy. No matter how you build your excuses, the flu can blow your house down. I can't believe I used up all my sick time. I missed a week of school during finals. Now my baby has it because of me. The hospital? Keep your foundation strong. Vaccinate. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. Members of a small community in Utah are reeling this morning following the murders of a local family. The bodies of eight people were discovered when police were asked to check on their well-being. It happened in the rural town of Enoch, Utah, a small community of about 8,000 residents. The victims include eight members of the same family. Five of them are children. Police are now trying to determine who shot them to death, but they don't believe there's an immediate threat to the public. Developments overnight on Capitol Hill. Kevin McCarthy is reportedly offering new concessions after losing a sixth vote for House Speaker. And because of this gridlock, no members of the House have been sworn in. That means there are zero members of the House of Representatives right now. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Overnight, sources say Kevin McCarthy offered key new concessions, hoping to sway far-right Republican holdouts to cast their vote for him as Speaker, a vote he's now lost six consecutive times. Sources say the concessions include a rule change that would allow one member of the House to call for a vote to oust the future Speaker, down from the original five members required by a previous deal. Another concession on the table, putting more members of the House Freedom Caucus on the powerful House Rules Committee. And a promise to a vote on bills that conservatives have been pushing on border security and term limits for House members. However, even with those concessions, sources say McCarthy is still unlikely to have the votes needed to secure the Speaker's gavel. The House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Last night, the House agreed to adjourn instead of holding another vote, giving McCarthy more time to make deals. But in what's likely a sign of things to come in the narrowly divided House, even the vote to adjourn was a nail-biter, with four far right Republicans joining all Democrats in voting against adjourning. Some Republicans now say this isn't so much about McCarthy as it is about not bending to the will of a small minority. I don't think uh, the vast majority of pro-McCarthy Republicans uh, in the Congress really think it's just about Kevin McCarthy. This is about making sure that we do not reward dysfunction. President Biden knocked Republicans, calling it embarrassing that the vote was taking so long. This is not a good look, and I hope they get their act together. The House is scheduled to return today at noon, and until a speaker is chosen, the House cannot pass bills or even swear in its new members. Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi said last night that the Republican gridlock shows disrespect for the institution. Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll have Pet of the Week in the building. We'll be right back. We all love the little pets. <laughs> Does your vehicle need a little more work? Have an odd sound coming from somewhere? Bring it over to Jackson's Automotive in Old Town. We have the best technicians and offer a fair price. We also accept all aftermarket protection plans. Now, if you're unable to drive your vehicle to us, we can help you get it here. Also, if you'd like to protect your vehicle for years to come, we offer Wool Wax Undercarriage Protection. We're located at 546 Main Street in Old Town. Give us a call at 827-2676. Have you stopped by our new location? Now located at 67 Belmont Avenue in Belfast. We recently moved and renovated a home from 1965 into our new retail establishment. We triple the space. Bigger space means even more products than before. Over 50 vape flavors, water pipes, hand pipes and accessories, there's something for everyone. At Riptide, we want it to feel like home. Because it is. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor.
Welcome back, everyone. Today is Thursday, January 5th, 2023. It's also National Bird Day, intended to bring awareness to the massive animal group, which is under particular threat since bird populations are considered the barometer of our planet's environmental health. The fact that so many bird species are under threat because of illegal, the illegal pet trade, disease, and habitat loss means it's a good topic to be considering and having conversations about. And if you want to learn more about rare bird species native to Maine, check out the MaineAudubon.org. They often hold birding field trip events that are open to the public. I'm pretty sure there's one coming up in the next week or so. On this day in history, this one being specific to Maine and Massachusetts, in 1786, a report issued by the Second Convention to discuss the possibility of Maine separating from Massachusetts, asserting that Boston merchants benefit unfairly at Maine's expense because of trade regulations involved lumber. The report also says that Boston officials didn't represent Maine interests well and Maine residents were at a disadvantage in court proceedings because all of the hearings were held in Boston and all the records were kept there as well. I think we know how that ended up. We yes. now have two states. We don't have to worry about it. Right. They went right. through their divorce sort of. Yes, it's probably good that it went that way. Yeah. And for national history on this day in 1930, Bonnie Parker met Clyde Barrow for the first time at Clarence Clay's house. They, of course, became known as Bonnie and Clyde. Did you ever see that movie? I have. I love that yeah. movie. And in 1934, Boston's Fenway Park caught fire for the second time, which led to the construction of the Green Monster, which was made of wood and covered with tin and concrete to become more fire resistant, kind of like a fire break. Yeah, and they've updated it since then. I don't yeah. think it's made of wood at all anymore. And for birthdays, today we have award-winning actor Robert Duvall, who's 91 today. And oh my gosh, I saw um, just a clip of him on Instagram recently mm -hmm. from something all the way back with Judy Garland, and I was like, wow, I forget. Been around he's forever, been yeah. Around. yeah. Yeah, wonderful actor. Yep. Also, actress Diane Keaton is 76 today, and actor Brady Cooper, Bradley Cooper, oh my gosh. I didn't mean to do that. That was, that was You're a fan, I I'm know. I'm a fan. I know. No, don't don't get it wrong. But yeah. he's 47 today. Yeah, so. two other really great actors there, too. Right, so. right. And the, uh, apparently it's a great birthday to have if you want to be talented and successful. Yeah. <laughs> so you, happy birthday to anybody else out there. Yeah. And if you have a birthday here in Maine today, you may want to just stay home. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of nasty out on the roadways. I noticed it's kind of quieted down here in Bangor, but they're yep. expecting on and off precipitation throughout the day. So things are slippery out there. Yep, be careful. Here's Devin Biggs with the full forecast. Hey, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. So we have winter weather advisories that are in effect. They run until about 5 o'clock this afternoon for these areas here, and that's because we do have some snow and a winter mix that is moving, and it's going to make roads a little bit slippery from time to time. We also have small cat advisories up until 1 o'clock this afternoon for this area right here. We'll pull this map further off towards the south and west, and some will expire at 4 p.m. So the times are going to be kind of various with regards to expiration times. So in general, small cat advisories along the coast today. Winter weather advisories is being noted here in a purple because of some travel issues with the winter mix and some accumulating snow that is moving in now and we're seeing it look at this so we have snow being indicated here in the blue and the darker blues indicating some heavier precipitation further off towards the south and west that pink indicating a wintry mix or some freezing rain in a few areas and further to the south and west in the green of course regular rain also being indicated let's zoom things out this is that wave of energy here riding along this front so we'll keep this going for parts of today we'll get a little bit of a break but maybe one more wave as we head towards tomorrow before things finally begin to ease up. But as for the winds, again, they're a little gusty out there. Sustained winds up to 10 miles per hour out of the northeast, especially over the ocean, and that is why those small craft advisories are in effect. Moving forward for today, there's a snow in that winter mix. Maybe a break later today, but more development on the way later on tonight before we start to wrap things up as we head towards your Friday morning. So we forecast for today, upper 20s, freezing rain, sleet, and snow on the way. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. That hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period will keep the snow in that winter mix going. Temperatures in the 20s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma? Killer snowballs. Really yeah. dangerous yeah. snowballs. Yeah, don't, don't have a snowball fight <laughs> don't, today. Not the day for it. Yeah. Okay, on that note, when we return, Ryan Sudol and Tyler Cruz will have your local sports. We'll also meet our pet of the week. Don't go away. Absolutely. Silver Fox Automotive is a family-owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. 
We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Pro football fans, it's You Pick'em NFL, the Pro Football Challenge from Fox 22. Go to foxbangor.com, click on You Pick'em, and go to You Pick'em NFL. Make your picks, and you could be the weekly winner of a gift certificate from Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor. Brought to you by Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor, Proudy Auto Body in Dober Foxcroft, Twin City Tile and Brewer, and Twin City Tint in Brewer. Compete all season long for the grand prize trip for two to Hawaii. It's You Pick'em NFL at foxbangor.com. On the next Last Man Standing. I think it's time for me to go out and get myself a real boyfriend. It's not like going to the pound and picking out a puppy. It's Valentine's Day. I'm here to congratulate the three of you on being finalists for the position of Eve's boyfriend. And love is in the air. A stun gun. Not just a stun gun, a great one. That thing will take down a moose. You got your wife a taser for Valentine's Day? You want to try it out? Yeah, I kind of do. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Following a shocky loss, how much added pressure will Roman Reigns place on the Usos to retain the tag team titles? Plus, Charlotte Flair is back. It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We will start with the big news dropped around 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Just one day after agreeing on a deal to avoid arbitration, the Boston Red Sox and Raphael Devers have agreed to a long-term extension. Boston and their all-star third baseman, who came up through the farm system, have agreed on an 11-year contract worth $331 million. So about $30 million a year. The contract puts him at, like I said, $30 million a year, 30 mil a year would make him the fourth highest paid third baseman in the MLB. Devers hit 295 last year with 27 home runs and 88 runs batted in and started the All-Star game for the American League. So he's really been a star for the last few years and a big day for Red Sox Nation as Rafi will be in Boston until his 37th birthday. Let's move on now. Some positive news on the DeMar Hamlin front on Wednesday as well. While the safety still remains in critical condition, it's been reported that doctors saw signs of improvement overnight. ESPN saying it was, quote, promising readings that they were hoping to see by the morning. The entire nation, not just the sports world, continues to pour in support. His toy drive charity has now raised over $6 million, with over 18000 coming from the Patriots and Robert Kraft. And every NFL stadium has been lit up in red and blue these past few days in support of DeMar. Moving on now, let's hit the hardwood. Maine women's basketball tipped off their America East home opener Wednesday night. As for the men, they begin their America East schedule on Thursday. And after their toughest non-conference slate in years, they're ready to make some noise. Ryan Sudall has more. Maine men's basketball starts America East conference play Thursday, a conference they were picked to finish last in in the preseason. It motivates us a lot. Like it's in, it's in our locker room, hanging up. We know it's not easy because we're starting from the bottom, but I think, you know, through practice and the games we've played, we've given each other confidence. You don't want to put too much weight in preseason polls. I mean, no one really knew what our group was, but. There's no question that you're going to use it as motivation. It's time for us, now that we're heading into conference play, to, to earn respect. The Black Bears certainly earned respect in their last game, where a fourth quarter comeback forced overtime against Harvard. Uh, I think it shows that we have no quit, and uh, uh, I think it shows how tough and gritty we are. And I think that was good for us, because going into conference, usually, you know, they're one, one two possession games. We got a, a group that's really resilient. They're going to fight. Uh, they're going to leave everything they have on the court. Might not always end in the result that you want, but they're giving themselves a chance every night. One of the big reasons for the Black Bears' resiliency is the surge brought by first-year coach Chris Markwood. He's got some great wins under his belt so far, but he's still learning. It's just a different deal, and 
you know, just like our players are learning on a daily basis, I'm trying to figure out uh, who I am as a head coach. So there's a lot of learning, a lot of growing for me to continue to do, and, and I love that aspect of, of what I do. Mark Wood and the Black Bears will put the lessons they've learned to the test Thursday as their first conference game is against 12-2 and UMass Lowell. They're a pretty good team. They got quick guards and uh, bigs who you know, know how to score down low. I told our guys this is a great first game of conference play to kind of see where you stand because you're going up against a top two or top three team. I think if we uh, stick to our principles defensively and share the ball offensively, we should uh, come out with a win. Reporting for ABC 7 Fox 22, I'm Ryan Sudol. Thanks for that, Ryan. We're going to stay with Maine basketball now. Like we said, the woman playing their conference home opener on Wednesday. So we'll head back to the pit where Amy Vashon and the Black Bears have that home opener. They are hosting UMass Lowell and the Black Bears looking for win number two in America East play. River Hawks are looking for their first. First quarter is where we will start off the inbounds. Abby Lawrence finds Ann Simon. She buries the corner three right in the defense's face. Maine up early. And then Simon again on the drive. She gets that contested lay in to go. But Lowell, they would fight back hard. Here's Kaylin Barnwarasing. She nails the mid-range for two. And this would go back and forth all night. Another bucket for Simon here on the inside. River Hawks took it to overtime, but Maine would hang on to win 70-63. to all right, let's stay in Orono now for some Class B North boys action. Golden Bucks, they are ready to go. Orono Red Riots, they are ready to go. And the Riots, they would start hot. Ellis Spaulding here on the drive and kick. He finds Brady Hughes, the freshman. He nails the triple. And then it's going to be Hughes again, this time on the fast break, getting it from Will Francis and knocking down the corner three. But... Bucksport would come back, though, and they would come back hard. Cameron Weber here on the offensive end. He's going to nail the mid-range jumper for two. Nice little pump fake there, and then gets the jumper to go in the teeth of the D. But Orno would be in control all night. Hughes misses the floater here, but Will Francis is there for the putback. Riots go on to win 69-54. to To our final tilt of the night we go. Old Town Coyotes are looking to stay perfect. They're playing the Trojans from MDI. Old Town is up in the fourth, and they are just trying to put this one away on the fast break. It's going to be Sage Evans here from the mid-range, and that one is good. And then on the fast break, or not on the break again, in the half-court offense, it's going to be Gabrielle Cody. This time she finishes with the left here. And then just to put the nail in the coffin is going to be Michaela Emerson, and she is going to be money from deep here from the corner. Old Town improves to 8-0 with the win. Final score, 49-21. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Looking for a new work experience? Fox and ABC Bangor are partnering with local employers to feature the best local job opportunities, like this one. Tyler came to Nitro Trailers a little over four years ago as a production welder, and throughout his time here, with hard work, determination, positive attitude, coachable, Tyler has advanced many positions throughout that short amount of time. He's been a huge asset to the company, Really enjoy having Tyler here and hope to have many more like him in the future. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order statewide. Bring your vision and enjoy better life and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danelle Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. Find your beat, your moment of calm. Find your potential then own it. Support your immune system with a potent blend of nutrients and emerge your best every day with Emergency. The Groove Crew is here! Hello! Yes! Let's Drew it! Oh, fantastic! You're here. It's fantastic. Just stay that way. I love it. Baby, do you feel me now? Feeling it. Yeah. Oh, give us a pint of the good stuff, Drew. You kind of crushed it today. I do love this job. Yeah! Drew, weekdays at 11 on Fox 22. The Pet of the Week is brought to you by 
Riptide Smoke Shop in Belfast. Welcome back to Good Morning, Maine. We're here with our pet of the week. Catherine Ravenscraft brought in this little guy from Bangor Humane Society. Catherine, thanks yes. for being with us today. Thank you. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's fun to be back. Who's this? So this is my friend, Kurt. He is a guinea pig. <laughs> he is only five months old, so he's still a baby. You can expect a guinea pig to last probably five or six years. Okay. And uh, Kurt came in with his brother, Blaine. And um, oh. they, I know they move fast, <laughs> yeah. right? They're prey animals, Checking so they move out. fast yeah. to fake you out. Oh, gotcha. Um, but um, he came in with his brother Blaine, and they just really weren't getting along. So we yeah. split them up to keep everyone safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Blaine did go home, but Kurt is still waiting for his forever family. And oh. he's a very sweet little guy. He's like the most relaxed guinea pig he I've ever seen. He is. Huh. Yeah, yeah. He's just chilling. He's very curious, too. Usually when I bring on a guinea pig or a, um, a rabbit, they just sit kind yep. of frozen through most of the yep. <laughs> segment. But uh, this guy is like, let's check it out. Yeah, he's been right. talking to you. And... Right. Yeah, yeah. We, I know. We've been hearing his week, week, weeks. I'm surprised he's not overstimulated because we had our camera guy come over and pet him. I've been petting him. <laughs> and yeah. So he's doing a great job. He really is. And the sad thing about his story is that he was found abandoned, oh. um, which, ooh, you going to give me a nibble? Um, <laughs> which happens um, really more often than we would like to see with huh. all kinds of different animals. People move out of their apartments and they just leave their animals behind. Really? Um, gotcha. So fortunately they were discovered and he is, he really wants a snack on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a hard bite though. He's just doing a sweet little love nibble yeah um but yeah so anyways he was discovered and and brought in and huh. hopefully How he'll about... find a good home i think he's going to be great with kids yeah. obviously he does not mind being handled right and uh as long as you have snacks handy so that he doesn't nibble on you yeah they're pretty easy to care for too right they they are generally i mean they're it depends on your version of easy yeah. uh i personally think that uh, an animal that lives in a kennel all the time is harder to care for because yeah. you have you to clean, clean the clean kennel out. Right. exactly exactly but generally you don't have to walk it in the snow like yeah. you do yeah. a dog right so it's a preference yeah. thing i'm sure exactly yeah. exactly and they're pretty easy to move if you're going to be going on vacation Maybe your neighbor can just sit yeah. the kennel for the week and, right. and watch the guinea Good pig. Point. So because yeah. it's such a pain in the butt to find boarding for a dog if you're going on vacation. It really is. Yeah. Increasingly so as right. well. So right. yeah, but they just they they like hay, uh, lots of fresh water, fresh vegetables. Be careful about the fruits that you feed them. Mm. Um, they can't yeah. have as varied a uh, diet as rabbits can. Huh. But yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty simple, and as long as they're socialized pretty frequently, oh. they're happy to snuggle. And so they're not like rats in that way, though, because I know you you told you enlightened me last time. Rats need a lot of social time. Rats do. We do not take rats at <laughs> yeah. Bangor Humane Society, unfortunately. And there's a lot of people out there that love rats. Yeah. But yes, you do have to socialize them consistently, pretty much every day, because they will go back to being beastly fairly quickly. <laughs> <laughs> not I, don't, I don't know if they can though. hear this, but he hasn't really stopped. He's just sitting there making all kinds of little sounds. He's answering all your questions. Yeah. Exactly. You're being interviewed there, buddy. I know. You want to nipple me? What do you think? What if I get him up by my mic? Oh. Maybe. What do you think? Right then, he'll bite your wrist. I know, exactly. <laughs> he did he's do still a little going. Week, week. Yeah, yeah, he's still going. Yeah. I love his little cowlick. He's handsome. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. Yeah. I thought it was a, an injury, but it's not. A lot of them have those, <laughs> Something yeah. got bonk on his head. <laughs> Catherine, yeah. thank you for coming you. by, as always. Thank yeah. People you. interested in adopting a guinea pig or any of the other animals over at the Bangor Humane Society can check out their webpage. They always welcome the help and volunteers, too. Indeed. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So. We can always use more. Absolutely. Right. Drive safe in. today. <laughs> Thank you. Now your forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. This right here is a winter weather advisory. It's in effect until about 5 o'clock this afternoon for the counties highlighted here in the purple. The times might be a little bit different depending on where you're at, so we'll pull this map around for a few spots to see how it goes. It looks like pretty much everyone's at around 5 o'clock for that in some areas until 1 o'clock this afternoon for a small cab advisory. But again, you pull this map to the south and west and some will expire at around 4 o'clock. So the times are kind of different depending on where you're at, but some wave height issues and of course wintry percent precipitation moving in, giving us some road conditions issues also being noted and snow mainly showing up on the radar. But again, a, a wintry mix possible as well.
snowfall, mainly sleet and freezing rain as temperatures are below freezing here at the surface. So we're going to be watching this throughout the daytime today. There will be some breaks with this, but more snow will be possible later on to the day into the overnight period before we catch a little bit of a break as we head towards tomorrow. Courtesy of this system right here that's tracking off towards the north and east, bringing this wave of energy with it. So we'll keep the snow chances going today into tonight. A little bit of a winter mix can't be ruled out either. And by later on, we'll start seeing things easing up just in time for the weekend. So moving th forward, though, future cash showing those snow chances in that winter mix as well. We'll keep that going for a bit, maybe backing off at times, but picking up again overnight tonight with another wave that will be developing. But notice just in time for Friday, things finally start to calm down before another wave of snow begins to move. So we have at least a couple more waves, I should say, of snow between Friday and between now and Friday, I should say, before things start to calm down just in time for the weekend. So a little bit more snow on the way before we're all finished up for your Saturday. So it looks like this at this point. So we're going to run us all the way through at least Thursday evening. So later tonight, though, maybe an inch or two before we're all finished up further off towards the north. Hardly anything toward the south between basically now and Thursday. I'm, I, am, I would imagine we might see a little bit more than that. But again, if we run this all the way through Friday, at least maybe one to two inches in a few areas before we're all finished up. Maybe up to four inches further off towards the south and east. At least another four to five inches between now and Saturday. So some accumulating snow on the way. Just make sure to keep an eye on things. Roads may get a little messy from time to time. So your forecast for today, upper 20s on the way. Freezing rain, sleet and snow. The northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight, mid 20s, so showers and freezing drizzle on the way. The north wind backing off to about five to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, Tomorrow, lower 30s, more snow showers on the way. North wind at about 5 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So again, we have snow showers through Friday, at least a couple more waves with that. And Saturday and Sunday, lots of sunshine temperatures in the 30s on Saturday, close to 40, then backing off to the mid 20s Sunday with even more sunshine by that point. Then we're partly cloudy again on Monday, highs in the mid 30s. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Here at Garrett's Auto Sales, we believe in fair prices, superior service, and always treating the customer right. We have a fantastic selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs to choose from, with some priced under $10,000. All our vehicles come with a complimentary 30-day warranty and can be seen at GarrettsAuto.com. Come see us at Garrett's Auto Sales, where we focus on you, the customer. We're located just two miles from the Brewer Walmart on Route 1A. We look forward to meeting you. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. One good guess. Cursed romance. Star-crossed lovers. <laughs> you better work! Deserves another. Egyptian writing. Hieroglyphics. Oh. Oh. I felt like the person shouting wrong answers at the study group. <laughs> and another. Opposite water. Sand. 25 words or less. You did it again. You're going home with another $10,000. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Ever see something you just couldn't explain in the sky? One expert says while official UFO reports are way down in Maine, there's may, there may actually be more sightings than ever. Mutual UFO Network and National UFO Reporting Center have documented unidentified flying objects for decades. In 2022, there were a combined 59 reports of UFO sightings in Maine. That's down from 73 in 2021 and from the record of nearly 100 in 2020. UFO author and researcher Norma Slebeck says the official numbers don't tell the whole story. There's actually a lot of sightings that are happening in Maine that are going unreported through official means. But 